Hi and welcome to my session about Rusty Rockets, about the Rocket Web Framework for building web APIs with the Rust programming language. I originally did this talk at the Rust Linz meetup a few days ago. Unfortunately, things didn't go very well with the recording and therefore I'm going to re-record my session now so that we can share it with all of you. It will be exactly the same content as I did during the web meeting, but this time, as I said, it's just a re-recording. Let me quickly introduce myself before we get started with the content. My name is Rhinus Dropic. If you want to get in contact with me, just visit my digital CV, you find it here, rhinostropic.me and on the right lower corner you find a bunch of links where you can choose your favorite developer network or social network and keep in touch with me. I am one of the co-founders of the Rust Linz meetup and I am an enthusiast when it comes to Rust, but I'm not an expert yet. Rust is not one of my main programming languages yet and this is, to be honest, one of the reasons why I co-founded the Rust Linz meetup. To have a meetup where I can share my, my journey towards becoming an, a more experienced Rust developer with other people who are also interested in this very exciting programming language. However, I am, yeah, I'm, I'm a little experienced when it comes to building distributed systems. So uh, building web APIs and distributed systems using C Sharp, Node.js, Go. This is what I essentially do for a living. So you can expect in the next half an hour or so, you can expect a viewpoint on the on the Rocket framework from somebody who knows a little bit about Rust and uh, quite a bit about web APIs and we will see where this story goes. Now, what is our agenda? My goal is that I would like to show you the basic principles of the Rocket framework. I only have approximately half an hour, maybe a little bit more, so I cannot go into all the details. But the important thing is, I don't want to show you a lot of slides. I would really like to focus on demos, demos, demos. So after this slide, this is the last one I have, I will switch to Visual Studio Code and I will walk you through a series of demos that, are, that begin very simple and at the end they are a little bit more elaborate so you get a, a clear understanding of what the Rocket Framework can offer to you and you can after the session decide whether you want to dive deeper. Whenever somebody does live demos, it's always important that you can recap what I show you during live demos. And therefore, I put everything on GitHub. You can find it here. Just go to github.com slash rstropex slash rusty rockets and you can find all the uh, code demos that I'm going to show you in the upcoming minutes exactly there. And with that, I think it's time to switch to Visual Studio Code and get going. I've prepared a completely empty Rust solution here. It's really entirely empty, as you can see. So we have to fill it with some interesting web API content. The first thing that we are going to do is we are going to add the dependency to our, car to our cargo toml file. In the cargo toml file, I've prepared some snippets here. Uh, we could, of course, add the rocket dependency from uh, from crates and uh, if we do that we have a slight problem because currently we can only get the 0 0.4 version from there and if we do that we cannot compile our application with the stable uh, version of Rust. We would need the nightly version because um, Rockets uses a lot of experimental features of Rust and uh, the current version of uh, 0 0.4 as I said is not ready for the stable version of Rust. So therefore this wouldn't be as good as I would like to have it. it things will change with the version 0 0.5 uh, being around the corner but currently only 0 0.4 has been published so this is the situation. We can get around this situation, however, because on the main branch in the, in the GitHub repository of uh, Rockets, there is already a version which can be compiled with a stable version of Rust. And therefore, I am going to switch the dependencies here. 
I am going to use a dependency, as you can see it here, to the Git repository and the master branch in this case. And with this repository and this dependency, I can compile my Rocket application using the stable version of Rust. This is exactly what I'm going to show you. Um, I've also already also added a bunch of dependencies here, which I'm going to need throughout my demos, but that's not as important. The, the important things are exactly these two repositories um, that you need currently in order to build your Rocket application using the stable version of Rust. With that, let's go into main RS and add a bunch of things. The first thing that I am going to add is I'm going to add a bunch of uses. These uses, um, I'm going to use them throughout the demo, so therefore we can just leave them here. I will fold them up because it's it's not that interesting, to be honest. Uh, let me do that like this, and that's good. The second thing that I'm going to add here uh, is a very, very basic get method that we need in order to get everything going. Let me quickly check uh, if we can run it. So here we are going to say uh, cargo build. Let's give it a sec in order to compile everything. Should be done in a second. And hopefully all the red squigglies will go away momentarily. Nice, we will add our last method here and with that we can get going. As you can see it here, my very, very simple starting point contains a single endpoint for a very, very simple web API. Here you see that we are using the get macro here and it will add all the necessary plumbing required to set up our web API endpoint. It says when an HTTP get method, as you can see it here, uh, arrives at the server at the root path, answer with a string hello world. The important thing here is that we can use a basic data type, like in this case a string, but we could also use things like numbers and options and results and so on. And the reason why we can return that is that Rocket contains a ready-made implementation of the so-called responder trait. The responder trait enables um, Rocket to turn this result data type into a proper HTTP response. If you would like to return your own type on, in this situation, you have to implement the uh, responder trait on your own. If you want, just follow this link and you can read all the details in the documentation about how you can do that. For our very simple uh, getting started example, this is perfectly fine what we have here. We also do not need to implement our own main method. All we need to do is to provide this rocket function and decorate it with the launch macro. And this will generate the main method for us. And yeah, everything will get going if we run this guy and if we build this guy. So with that, let's give it a try. Uh, cargo run. It should be done in a sec. And here we are. We have our first web API with just Hmm, two, three lines of code. That's exactly what I wanted to show you. I have prepared a bunch of demo requests, which we can now try if we would like to run this one. As you can see, it is a get request on API. You might wonder, hey, Reiner, you just showed us that you're listening on the root path. Well, I do, but those of you who watched me closely, who's, you saw that I'm using here a kind of namespace. So all the routes that we add here to our rocket function are below the slash API route. So this slash API is a prefix for our routes and therefore we are entering this hello world route whenever we we run a web API request against slash API slash. And as you can see, our web API answers with hello world. Well, this sample was very simple. I think we should get into the next demo, which will add a little bit more interesting features uh, in order to, to get going. Let's do that. Let's add the next one here. This one. This is an example 
which shows you how you can use, you can see it here, dynamic paths for your routes. In this case, I'm defining a route which is called greeting and this route will get a parameter which is called name and Rust will automatically provide the content from the URL, from the path in our parameter in the greeting method. The important thing here is that again, everything relies on the Rust type system. So what you can essentially do, you can use all the types for which the Rust framework provides the from param trait. And if you have your own data type, your own structs, for instance, you can also provide a from param trait implementation so that the Rocket framework knows how to get the parameter for the method from your HTTP request. This is how this thing works. And in my very simple example, I'm just returning a greeting which contains the parameter of the, um, of the route. So let's add this one to the route greeting and let's give it a try. Let's cargo run it again. Let's switch to request. And if you show, if I show that to you, it says hello world looks pretty good. And if we say hello foo, it will, yeah. Uh, this is what I wanted to show you. It will print hello foo. Nice. Second example, we have now seen how dynamic URLs work. Let me add a third method here, a third endpoint, and then we'll take a look at testing. Let me add the query stream param sample. This is the third sample that I would like to show you and it adds um, dynamic query string parameters as you can see them here. Here you see that we have two parameters. The first one is a string as you can see it here and the second one and that's the important thing here is for instance, oops, I'm very sorry. I drew wrong lines. Let me get that straight. Yeah, something like this. The second one is of data type option. Data type option uh, is also has also the from param trait implemented. So therefore, we can use it to, um, to to implement optional parameters in the query string. The return value again is a basic data type, but we have learned before that because of the responder trait, everything is fine, we can just return a string. So this is how you can add parameters to the query string. Let's give it a try. Query greeting. I don't need these parameters. I just want to add the route. And let's rerun this guy here. Let's open the request again. And here I have prepared a bunch of requests. And as you can see, in this case, I'm just providing the name and it says, hello, Reiner. And if I provide the optional salutation, as you can see it here and run it again, it says, hi, Reiner, because I provided the salutation and the name. This is what I wanted to show you when it comes to dynamic query string parameters. And obviously you can combine dynamic paths and dynamic query parameters. With that, I would like to enter a little bit different topic, the topic of testing. Can we test those, uh, those web requests? Well, of course we can. Let's add a new Rust file here, tests.rs. And in this tests.rs, let's add some very simple tests that I have prepared. Here is the basic test, as you can see it here. Uh, and let's add immediately the dynamic path test and let's add the query string tests. Now let's take a look at these tests and how they are implemented. If we, oops, if we zoom in a little bit, we will take a look at the first test here. This is the very basic test checking whether our first request at slash API works. We can use the client which is provided by the Rocket framework in order to issue a local request as you can see it here. And then we can use usual assertion to make sure that the proper response was provided by our web API. The same applies to the more, a uh, little bit more advanced scenarios where we add some dynamic parameters in the uh, path and where we add some dynamic parameters here in the query string. The concept is always the same. Let me quickly go back to my main method here and add, uh, buh, 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 
at the annotation for the test module and with that we will give it a try we will say cargo test and let's see whether it works uh, client re-implemented oh I think I have yes I have messed up something duplicated code I'm very sorry there is a bug in my snippets here I corrected it and give it a try and now hopefully everything will work yes it works as you can see automated testing for such scenarios is pretty obvious pretty simple it works like a charm exactly as we expected it good now we have finished our next part of the demo basic best get requests dynamic paths and dynamic string parameters dynamic query string parameters the next topic that I would like to cover are so-called request guards because request guards are were a topic or a concept that I was not familiar with from other frameworks like C Sharp or Go and so on. I am obviously familiar with the topic of middlewares but request guards are somewhat different and I would like to include them in my demo here. Let me add a new file here, API key.rs, and in this API key, I have, let me see here, custom request guard. I have a simple demo for a custom request guard. Let me walk you through the code. First, uh, zoom in, and I think it's good like that. As you can see, I'm using an, uh, a structure here that is called API key, and I'm implementing the from request trait for the API key, and that's exactly the request guard. What I can do with this request guard, I can make sure that the request, request guard is called before my route is entered. So I provide a method implementation from request where I get the request and I have a chance to inspect the request and maybe extract data and fill my output, which will be my outcome, which you can see here, which will be an instance of my API key. And this API key will then be given to the route. In my very simple demo, I am inspecting the request and extracting from the HTTP uh, headers the header x-api-key and I'm using base64 to decode this string here. If everything works correctly, so if I can find the header and if I can successfully extract the header or decode, base64 decode the header, everything is fine and I will construct an API key as you can see it here. Otherwise, I will not let the request go through that's the whole point of a request guard. It is a guard in front of the request and it lets HTTP requests only through if all the requirements are fulfilled. So if we don't find an API key in this very simple example, or if the API key is not properly base64 encoded, we will just say no unauthorized, that is not okay. Now, how can I use this custom request guard in one of my routes? I will add the next sample here. This is the route with guards. It's really nothing special. It's something, it's very similar to what we already did before, but this time we are here referencing a structure for which this request guard had been, has been implemented. We have seen it a second ago. So by referring to this type, and because of the fact that this type, for this type, the, the trait for the request guards is implemented, this uh, route can only be called if a proper API key was given. Let me demo that. Let's add the protected route to the list of routes that we would like to serve. And let's go here and rerun our application open the requests HTTP. If I do not provide any API keys and I run this one, I will get a 401 unauthorized. This is what we expected. If I provide a proper API key, let me quickly show you that this is really a base64 value, the super secret API key secret is provided. Oops. I didn't want to do that. Let me base64 encode it again. If I provide this X API key, everything is fine and we get allowed 
we get the allowance to, to call the web API under the protected route. You can see you are allowed to access this API because you presented the key secret. And this key was extracted from the HTTP request, not by the route, but it was extracted by the route guard. If we do something wrong, if I mess up and I present something which is not base64 encoded, I will also get a 401 unauthorized because this is exactly what the route guard said. So as you can see that route guards are a pretty powerful mechanism and you could imagine yourself implementing route guards for your specific um, authentication and authorization system or you can use existing uh, crates for I don't know checking a presented JWT token from any kind of OpenID connect authentication mechanism whatever you would like to do route guards are your friend when it comes to uh, checking security requirements in HTTP requests. Good! Of course, Rocket is not limited to custom route guards. There are also existing route guards which you can use directly as they are presented out as they have been created by the creators of the Rocket framework. Let me show you as an example one route guard which I find particularly interesting. This is the cookie guard. The cookie guard allows you to inspect request cookies and return response cookies in a very simple way. Let me show you this demo here. The first one, it's, it's just a very simple example. The first one implements a kind of faked, very naive, granted, login mechanism. This login mechanism, if you call this endpoint, will use the cookie char type for which is a request guard, the cookie request guard, um, it will give you access to all the cookies inside of your HTTP request. In this case, I'm not uh, reading the cookies, but in this case, I am adding a new cookie. As you can see, I will add a cookie named session with a very, very, a very, very secure, high secure session key. Of course, this is just for demo purposes. And then I have a second route, you can see it here, session, which again takes the cookie jar, but this time it's going to read the cookies from the HTTP request. If everything is okay, it says you got the cookie. If it doesn't find the necessary session cookie, it will say sorry, no cookie. Let's give that a try and see how the ready-made request guard for cookies works with the Rocket framework. Login session. Let's rerun this guy and go to our requests here. As you can see, the first try, the first API request is this login request. Let's give it a try. I will send the login re request and this is exactly what I get back. We get back a set cookie um, command from the server and we are setting the session cookie just as we have presented this session cookie using the cookie jar type in our Rust code. When we now call the session endpoint, it will say you have the cookie because our login request, which we did before, successfully set the session cookie which we can now consume. So now you have seen a nice example of a ready-made request guard, in this case a request guard that enables you to access session cookies, uh, not, not just session cookies, any cookies which are in HTTP requests or which you would like to set through HTTP responses. Nice! I think we are now ready for a more elaborate example. We have now seen the concepts of routes, the concepts of starting a rocket server. We have talked about dynamic paths, dynamic query string parameters. You've learned about the, the cookie request guard and custom request guards. I think we are ready to build a small REST API. Granted, a very simple REST API, but this is an introductory talk, so therefore we are not going to dive very, very deep. But I hope the upcoming sample will give you um, a little bit uh, closer, uh, a little bit clearer picture about how to build uh, a web API using the Rocket framework. Now, let's add a region here and let's add the types that I'm going to use throughout this example. The first type, as you can see it here, is the hero type because we are building a REST API with which we can maintain heroes. And the second type is new hero. 
hero will be used to return a single hero instance or a list of heroes. New hero will be used to receive an HTTP POST request with which a user can create a new hero in our in-memory repository. The important thing here is this one, and I think this is already, the, those of you who look closely at the code already spotted that. Uh, the Rocket Framework uses Serdy to do deserialization and serialization of JSON content. So therefore, I just add serialize and deserialize the proper macros here at the beginning, and I can use all the, the macros here from Serdy in order, in this example, for instance, to rename uh, this property from can underscore fly to the typical JavaScript casing can fly. I think you get the idea. So we are going to use this as our data types. Next, we need some kind of repository. Now, let me tell you one thing. Rocket comes with a built-in support for databases. You can store your state in databases. You can use, uh, for instance, Postgres and many other databases. You can also use an OR mapper like Diesel, for instance. I only have approximately half an hour here for this presentation, so therefore I'm not going to dive into integration of databases with connection pooling and all this stuff. I am sure those of you who find this topic interesting will be successful uh, after reading the documentation of the Rocket Framework. In my case, I will just use an in-memory hash map in order to store a hash map of the heroes and the key will be the hero's ID. In order to protect the heroes map here, I'm going to use a reader writer lock and my application will also auto generate the unique IDs for the heroes using an atomic U size, as you can see it here. If you want to learn more about um, state management and database support, I have added the link here in the, in the documentation, in the comments of my samples. And if you want to get the samples, just check out the Git repository that I mentioned at the beginning of my talk. You will find all the code samples there. Now we can start implementing our API. And let me add three. Add hero, uh, get single hero, and get all heroes. Let me add three routes here. The first one, we will use it to add heroes. The second one is a, um, a route with which you can get a single hero. And the last one is a, a route with which we can get a list of all the heroes. Let's check out the add, oops, sorry. Let's check out the add hero function at the beginning. As you can see, we are listening on the heroes URL and here you can see a format JSON. Format JSON means um, that we would like to restrict the, the router to only deliver HTTP requests which contain a content type header of application slash JSON. This is what the format, um, what, what this format thing says here. The next thing that I would like to point your attention to is the data here. Data says that the HTTP request body should be deserialized into our hero parameter. So, Serdi will be used to deserialize JSON, which comes in through the HTTP request body, and we can expect the content to be in our hero variable. Therefore, we can access this hero variable throughout the implementation of our add hero method. Now, the next thing looks a little bit strange. As you can see it here, we get two parameters here, which say, which use the type state. State is a type provided by the Rocket framework. And I know this concept from other frameworks as some kind of dependency injection. What you can essentially do, you can register global states, in my case, just in-memory states, and these global states will then be injected into your routes. There are global states, but there would also be request local states, which you can use to, um, to get new instances of the according types for every HD, incoming HTTP request. I will not use uh, request local states in this example here. I will just use global states. In my case, I'm going to register a hero's map and a hero count in order to generate unique IDs for our heroes as global states. 
Let me immediately show you how we register that and then we will come back to our add hero function here. I will go down here and I have prepared the snippet here. This is what I have to do in my launch function in order to register global state. Here you can see that I'm using, that I'm adding a new instance of my reader writer lock protected hash map and I also use a new instance of my hero counter which starts with one and as I said the hero counter will be used to generate to auto generate primary keys for all the heroes that we add through our web API through our rest API okay so let's get back to our add hero and now you should understand where these two states come from they were registered in our launch function i don't think that i need to go into all the details of the rust code because it's pretty obvious and probably you have already taken a glimpse on this uh, source code it's just generating a new hero and it's adding it to our hash map nothing special if i messed something up concerning rust if i didn't write some idiomatic rust as you would expect it please be gentle with me as i told you i'm not a very experienced rust developer yet i'm an enthusiast i really want to learn it but if you see something that i do which is not idiomatic rest please get in contact with me send me a pull request for my sample or something like this I am just a beginner and I'm trying to explore what I can do with Rust. Nevertheless, I hope that my content is useful for you. If you are new to the Rust platform and you are an API developer, then maybe this will hopefully ease your, uh, your journey into the Rust world. The thing that I would like to focus on here in the add method, uh, instead of going through line by line the code here, is this macro because it's pretty useful and I use it a lot in other languages and platforms like for instance ASP.NET Core and C Sharp. The problem here is that I'm implementing an add method and of course I would like to return a created HTTP response. By the way, uh, responding with a created response is really simple using the rocket framework because there is a ready-made type for that we can just return created here and that has a, a responded trait and therefore it will be turned into an H proper HTTP response with the proper HTTP status set and things like that the important thing why I wanted to point your attention to the URI macro here is that in this case I need to build the location header for the HTTP post. For those of you who are not that familiar with building REST APIs, if you build a writing, a creating function in a REST API, it is best practice to return an HTTP header which is called location and this header should point to the URL where you can later on read the data that you have created using the HTTP POST request. And of course we need to build the URI properly. And here the URI macro comes in very handy because we can reference, let me show you that here, we can reference the function, the route with which you can get a single hero and the generating of the proper URI is done by the rocket framework. You don't need to implement your own string building functionality that you can maybe mess up because if you change the route URL here then the location header will be wrong and things like that. The URI macro is really really useful in such situations. This is a good thing, so we can now uh, focus on the get hero methods. The first one uses a, a dynamic par a path parameter. We are here requesting data about a single hero by specifying its ID. Please note that I'm using the ID type here. So if I scroll up a little bit, then we will see that the ID type, it's just a U size. And that one is again, very important. I repeat myself consciously. 
If you specify something like this, then the router of the rocket framework will consider the type of the parameter and it will only route a request to your, um, to your endpoint if the data type matches. So if it is a U size that the user entered in the path. Again, we request the global state with the hero map that you see here, and we can just do a very simple get here. And essentially the same applies here with the get all, we just return all the heroes. Okay, let's give it a try. Let's add our add hero. Here we have the add hero, oops, this one. Then I want to add get the uh, get all, and I want to add the get hero here. I think that looks good. And with that, we can rerun. Hey, I, ca I could watch this, but I will just uh, start Cargo Run again. It's running. And as you can see here, we have our very, very simple REST API with a writing endpoint, post to heroes and to reading endpoints, get all heroes and get a single hero. It's time to test our application. Here you see the heroes and the first thing that I'm going to try here is creating a hero. Let's create the hero Homelander, okay? It worked perfectly fine as you can see here, 201 created and even our fancy location header works as expected. We see that by uh, issuing a HTTP GET request to API slash hero slash one, we should get back data about Homelander. Let's add another hero here, the deep. And let's run it and we see we get a new ID again created and a proper location header. This is what I wanted to show you. If we specify a wrong content here, as you can see it here, name is misspelled. This will not go through because the JSON could not successfully be uh, deserialized into our um, Rust structure type. Therefore, we get an error from the rocket framework. Yes, we can catch this error and uh, error, and yes, we can um, customize the response here. I will show you that in a second. Last but not least, let's quickly check the get all heroes. Works very fine. You see, we get Homelander and the Deep, and if we just query the um, latest hero that we added, as you can see it here, new hero response body ID, we will get the deep because the deep was the last hero that we added to through our resp uh, to, through our rest api by the way if you are new to visual studio and you ask yourself hey how is rhino generating all these http requests this is a very very nice uh, extension to visual studio code it's called the rest client you can install it for free it's open source and it gives you the possibility to document a typical http requests in a nice little text file which you can check in together with your rest api and it serves as a kind of uh, experimental playground. It serves as a kind of documentation. You can add comments, you can do some fancy referencing between the different requests in this file. I I really like this plugin and I use it on a daily basis, not just with Rust and Rocket, but with all the web API frameworks that I regularly use. That was just a side step. <laughs> Okay, we have created our nice little REST API. Very good, we are making progress. Now, what is left? Well, I promised you a minute ago that it is possible to uh, customize error responses. And you can do that by using so-called catchers. Here you see a custom catcher for a 404 error. In this case, a not found error. And I'm just returning a custom JSON in a very, very simple way. If you want to do that, you can easily register this one. And I have registered the catcher or I can register the catcher like this. I'm just registering the catcher, which is not found. And this is the not found and it catches the 404 response. Let me show you that this really works. So if we 
uh, try to uh, ask for something here a request maybe let's ask for a hero that does not exist let's run this request and as you can see we now get our custom JSON exactly as specified in the catcher and with that you can obviously add catches for uh, uh, for all the things that you need to handle for all the kinds of errors for which you want to provide your own implementation your own kind of responses Good, I have one final demo um, for you. And this final demo, let me fold this up, is about fairings. Fairings is what you might know from other API platforms as middlewares. It comes nearest to the concept of middlewares from other platforms, at least uh, on, on, in my, uh, my impression. Um, let me show you let me describe fairings by walking you through this example that I created for you. In this case, I created a very simple log fairing. So the idea is that I can register a fairing and this fairing has a chance to intercept any incoming request or, res or outgoing response and to th do something with it. It can manipulate it or it can, as shown here, it can uh, very easily take it and for instance do a naive logging implementation. In my case, I will use, let me show you that here, I will use a very simple uh, log gathering tool. Let me limit the request here. As you can see, currently no requests are here. And what I'm going to do whenever the rocket framework uh, receives an HTTP request, I'm going to use request as you can see it here. And oh, sorry, not here. <laughs> here, I'm going to use request to format some log data to uh, SEC, which is uh, a nice little tool. It's for free for your personal use, uh, where you can gather all the log information about your applications running in your, I don't know, private cloud or whatever you want to do. Uh, please use your imagination here. This can be any kind of middleware for logging, for enriching HTTP requests or responses or whatever you want to do. Maybe you want to gather some metrics and you would like to send it to your specific monitoring and telemetry solution. For all these uh, application scenarios, you can use fairings. Now, how are these fairings implemented? Here, I have created a very simple structure, which is a log event, as you can see it here. And this log event is then used in the fairing down here. Here, this is a fairing for log target. Um, this is a very simple type. You will see it in a second, how I register this fairing with the rocket framework. And then I can provide a bunch of uh, a bunch of methods in uh, this this trait implementation. In this case, I'm only implementing the on request method, and this method builds a log event. It notes down the timestamp when the HTTP request came in. It uses a very simple message template and adds um, a message template item here, the path where we use the request URI to get the path from and we add it to our log event. Last but not least, uh, as I told you, this is a rather naive implementation, but I hope it is still useful uh, for you learning about the, the Rocket Framework. I'm using a local web API provided by the SEC client where I just send um, the, the log information in JSON format to this endpoint. In re real world, you will obviously not send each request immediately to your, your logging provider, but you will maybe uh, gather all the requests and send them in batches to your log. But it's th this is out of scope of this talk. I just want to describe what these fairings are all about. And as you can see here, it is all about um, providing some methods which are called on request responses and things like that. Let's register this fairing down here. Here we attach the fairing. The log target is used here because we have implemented the fairing trait for our log target structure. And with that, our middleware was registered and it will now hopefully log incoming requests to SEC. Let me try it. Let's run our application again. 
and maybe put that one to the side and have sec here on the right hand side and yes i can do it like that and let's go to our requests and send some requests here and here and here and here and as you can see here on the right hand side on sec let me send just a bunch of things here the requests are coming flying in and uh, this this is exactly what this fairing is doing if i go here whenever um, a request is handled by the rocket framework this request is taken by this fairing and it is set sent wrong direction it is sent to the sec log gathering system where we can then use this database to inspect all these detail all these requests in more details in this case i didn't specify uh, a lot of information just the path as you can see it here but i'm quite sure if you use your imagination you can come up with much more useful and much more elaborate scenarios for what these fairings can do for you and with that I am done with my demo and I also used, oh, I used a little bit more than the, um, the half an hour. I used approximately 40 minutes. I hope that's okay for you. Um, let me quickly go back to my slides here, to my first slide. This was an introductionary talk about the Rocket Framework, how you can implement APIs with Rust. I enjoyed preparing this presentation for you. I hope it was interesting. If you have any problems, don't hesitate to get in touch with me. Twitter is a great way of getting in touch. Take a look on GitHub where you can find all the sample code and take a look on my YouTube channel because I will definitely uh, publish this, uh, this video uh, either on the Rust channel or in my personal YouTube channel. With that, I would like to say Thank you and I hope I will see you in one of the upcoming Rust Lintz meetup meetings which happen monthly. Just go to rust lintzat and you can see when we have our next meeting and who our speakers will be. Thank you and goodbye.